people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to the very first FNAF news video of 2024. We got an update on the Five Nights at Freddy's Survival Crew Roblox game, new Funko leaks regarding their upcoming FNAF movie merchandise, and Scott Cawthon may have just answered one of the biggest questions regarding the FNAF lore, that and so much more in today's video. I'd love to know how's everyone's new year going, did you enjoy the holiday season, what are you looking forward to for FNAF going into the new year? And speaking of all that, let's start this video off by talking about all the New Year's posts we got from Steelwall Studios. Because first of all, they showed off some amazing artwork of the Freddy and Friends cast celebrating the new year. Looks like Freddy has lit a sparkler, Chica is enjoying her juice box, Foxy's howling to the moon, and Bonnie is riding a rocket, which probably seems pretty dangerous, huh? Steelwall also made a second New Year's tweet saying we're ending 2023 with a big thank you to everyone in our gaming community. Your support this year has been incredible, here's to another year of awesome, Happy New Year from Steelwall Studios. And in the artwork, we can see one of the sheep saying, what do you think will happen next year? And the other Steelwall sheep replying with, who knows? And now let's move on to some merchandise. And of course, we've got to start off the merch segment by taking a look at Hot Topic. Because recently, they've been releasing their brand new FNAF Sour Orange Candy Pizza Slices. They come in these tiny Freddy Fazbear pizza boxes featuring Toy Freddy. I haven't seen a picture of the pizza slices themselves, but it's interesting that they went with Sour Orange? The orange part, I can make maybe understand because the crust of a pizza I guess looks a little orange but why you gotta make it sour? Why can't you make it sweet? I've checked my Hot Topic a few times now. They unfortunately haven't had these guys in stock, but it seems like they're rolling out in stores now. Hot Topic is also selling a brand new FNAF movie t-shirt. It's got Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, the Cupcake, and Foxy, of course, in their iconic poses that we see in the poster. And then it's got Five Nights at Freddy's down at the bottom. And speaking of shirts at Hot Topic, here's all the brand new ones that they've been pumping out. Some of them look good, some of them look bad. All I know is that the top middle one looks like he's trying to be Bear 5. And then they've all also been releasing a whole bunch of accessories like buttons and patches and cups. Down at the bottom, you can also see the Just Toys Series 3 craftables. I feel like those guys don't need a segment on their own. But once again, it's featuring the Security Breach characters, Monty, Chica, Vanny, Roxanne, Freddy, and even the Wet Floor Bots getting in on the action. Now moving on to Funko, we got some brand new looks at the upcoming Funko Snap figures. We've talked about these guys and we've seen them in the past, but here we can get a better look at the Staff Bot, Roxanne Wolf, and Helpy. No exact release date on these figures just yet, but I'd assume they're coming out pretty soon, seeing as they're getting on some online store pages. And speaking about Funko, we got some brand new leaks in regards to their upcoming FNAF movie merchandise, because it has been confirmed by Scarlet Joker, who is a reliable Funko leaker and insider, that Funko plushies based on characters from the FNAF movie are in the works, with one of them being confirmed to be Mr. Cupcake. So while the rest of the plushie lineup is unconfirmed, I wouldn't be surprised if the other plushies are just the FNAF 1 characters, Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy. If that's the case, hopefully they're not just basic recolors. I'd like to see them change up the molds of the plushies to make them at least a bit different. But I'd also like to see Funko take a shot at making some plushies based on the human characters like Mike or Vanessa or William. Or maybe if Funko feels like human plushies based on FNAF characters wouldn't sell well, I'd at least hope they do some other animatronic characters we see in the film then. The Yellow Rabbit plushie could be super cool. Maybe even a Sparky the Dog plushie. That would be awesome. I just really hope it's not the same FNAF 1 plushie molds with just just maybe a different material. That would really suck. Though lastly, for the FNAF movie plushes, we do also know that a jumbo 16-inch cupcake plush is also in the works. So I guess FNAF movie cupcake fans, you're eating pretty good. And then lastly, for Funko, we got some leaks on some brand new upcoming Funko Pops. First up, a Freddy Fazbear Black Light Glow in the Dark Pop is coming. I am curious to know if it's going to be the same design as the re-release of the Freddy Black Light Pop we got not too long ago, or if it's going to go back to that original Black Light design. But lastly, for leaked Funko Pops coming up, we got a Twisted Ones 4-pack, which will glow in the dark. We've already gotten pops based on the Twisted figures, though there are more than four, so I'm curious to know who they're going to include. Moving on now to U2's, their Help Wanted figures and pin set is available now. By the time this video goes up, there will only be about five or four days to pick up all this merchandise, so if you want them, I'd recommend acting fast. As you can see, included in the wave are figures of Shadow Mangle, Grim Foxy, Dreadbear, and Glitch Trap. And something pretty interesting about the Dreadbear 
figure. Every one in five or six figures has the chance of becoming a chase. And this is what that chase figure looks like. As you can see, he glows in the dark. How cool is that? He also glows very, very well. And then also the pin set is available now. It's got Shadow Mangle, two Glyph Trap pins, Dreadbear and Grim Foxy. And lastly, for you twos, it's not necessarily FNAF news, but I figured I'd throw it in here anyways because MatPat is getting a figure. You twos posted this on their Twitter not too long ago, and it says, remember, it's all just a theory. In a Reddit AMA, I think last year, they did confirm a MatPat figure was coming at some point in 2024. I didn't think it'd be this soon though, so I guess get hype. And now let's move on to Five Nights at Freddy's Survival Crew, which is or was at least a multiplayer Roblox game that got accidentally released way too early. If you want more info on the game, I made a whole video going over the story in the game. That's going to be linked down below. But after the backlash, the game got taken down by Scott, and actually we got a brand new update from the developers of the game, where they took to Twitter to write a note about the recent beta release of Survival Crew. We want to apologize for the confusing beta release earlier this week. Scott has instructed us that the game be completely thrown out and started over from scratch with completely new gameplay and new assets, and that it only be released when it meets a much higher standard. If the game never reaches that standard, it will never be released. We look forward to providing a high quality Roblox experience for FNAF fans. So you can tell, Scott was pretty pissed at the situation here. Starting over completely from scratch, brand new assets, brand new models, brand new gameplay even. A very hefty toll the devs have to pay in regards to this entire situation, but it seems like it's for the best, and at the very least, they seem passionate still about delivering a quality product. I said this in my video recapping the situation, but I really do wish the best for the dev team. They screwed up massively. I'm not going to sugarcoat that, and I'm not going to let them forget that, but if they can push forward and still deliver an amazing experience... I'm gonna give them props. But again, it still seems like they're super dedicated to the project. If it doesn't reach that standard of quality that Scott and the team is looking for, they're just not gonna release it. So while it might be a very long time until we get a brand new update on Survival Crew, I'm very intrigued to see what the new gameplay, assets, and just entire game is gonna look like by the time we do get a brand new update. And I'd also love to know what are your thoughts on this brand new update on the Survival Crew situation. And speaking of Scott, for a final news topic for today, he put out a brand new Reddit comment and it's got the entire community split. So so before we take a look at the actual comment, let me first give some backstory about why he had to make this comment in the first place. A few days ago, a user on the FNAF subreddit posted a video of an email that they allegedly got from Scott. They reached out to him hoping that he could clarify some lore aspects in regards to the Fazbear Fright and Tales from the Pizzaplex novels. To quote the email itself, I previously remember you saying some in Fazbear Frights in regards to the stories are directly connected to the games. But what exactly does that mean? So basically, if you're not a lore head, there were two series of FNAF novels, one of them called Fazbear Frights and the other one called Tales from the Pizzaplex. And it's been a very heated topic of discussion in the FNAF theorizing scene whether or not these two series are connected or canon to the events of the game. And so Scott, allegedly, responded back to this email, saying the Fazbear Fright books have certain stories which are in the continuity of the game, and Tales from the Pizzaplex's entirety is in the continuity of the games. So basically, fan email Scott asking, hey, clarify this lore. And Scott says, okay, and clarifies the lore. And a lot of people are like, I don't know, that's fishy. Why would he respond to an email just out of the blue with such a massive lore drop? And like I said, it's a very heated topic of discussion in the theorizing scene. Why wouldn't he just make an entire Reddit post dedicated to answering that question? And eventually Scott did respond to this alleged email. He said, guys, come on, is there a facepalm emoji I can use in here? But that left a lot of people like, Okay, so what is up with the email? And thankfully, Scott did make another comment, saying, I'm not sure if the email itself was faked or if someone posing as me sent it, but anyone who knows me after all of these years should know that that isn't how I would address such a serious topic. So let me take this opportunity to be as clear as possible. Concerning what people are saying about the canonicity of the books, Yes, that is correct. I hope that clears things up. Everyone have a great weekend. There you go. Scott finally cleared up this massive question and everyone is on the same page, is what I would say if 
we lived in a perfect world, which we don't, just to make sure we're all on the same page. People are linking it back to the fake email and what was said in there, which seemingly would confirm some stories in Fazbear Frights would be canon to the games, every story in Tales would be canon to the games, but then other people are like, wait, he's not talking about the email at all. Like I said, people are talking a whole bunch of stuff about the books. I've seen some people say that every story from every book is now canon to the games. I've seen some people say that this doesn't confirm anything and this is another mangle situation. With people asking, are the books canon or not and Scott saying yes and people are like okay well what are you saying yes to if they're canon or if they're not canon so for the whole rest of the day people were begging pleading Scott Cawthon please clarify what the hell are you talking about man and well as of 12 hours after the comment was posted Scott's not clarified, and quite frankly, I don't think he will. While I don't think Scott intended to be so vague while he was writing this comment, I also think it does benefit him and the franchise as a whole to remain so vague. That's how you keep discussions and theorizing going, but at the same time, a lot of people, including myself, I'd say, would argue that this comment actively made the discussion worse. So I'd love to know, what do you think Scott is answering in this comment? Do you think he's answering anything at all? That's going to do it for this FNAF news video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully your 2024 is going good so far, and I will see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.